Pat Tucker from Northside Anesthesia, and we're going to talk today about airway management under general anaesthetic. So the first question I've got for you, Pat, is what is an airway and why do you need it? Okay, so an airway is a device like buttons breathing into here that we put down a patient's airway, which is basically a respiratory tract, so like their larynx and their trachea mainly, and it enables us to provide ventilation to the patient. So it's needed if the patient is given a general anaesthetic, um, so whether they've been given a full general anaesthetic or whether they're just given a partial one without muscle relaxation. It's needed in both cases um, to maintain the airway so that there's a so Pat, um, can you show us what some of the airways that you have at your disposal and explain to us when you might use one airway over another? Yep, sure. So I'll, I'll just at the start, sometimes, um, sometimes we will have a awake or a sedated patient um, who has got some sort of local anaesthetic block on board. Um, in our case, with the hips, um, they have a spinal block on board. So in those cases, we just like to give a bit of extra oxygen and we just pop this mask over your face and it just provides a bit of extra oxygen to keep the, um, the amount of oxygen in your blood up. Then, if you're having a full general anaesthetic, we'll use this mask initially, um, which goes over your face like this. Um, if you are claustrophobic, then do let us know because we can hold it above your face um, until you go to sleep. Then once you're asleep, we switch directly onto our, onto our airway um, and we use this to give you um, some ventilation, so give you some oxygen into your lungs and let the CO2 come out while we're waiting for our drug, drugs to take full effect and the muscle relaxants to take full effect. With this um, mask airway, it, is, it relies on getting a good seal around, around the mouth. So if you have got any facial hair, that can um, really limit the, the ability to get a good seal, which will limit the um, ability to give you good oxygenation while we're waiting for the other drugs to take effect before we can pop, put in another breathing tubes. So sometimes, um, I will ask the patient to have facial hair whether you, you will mind shaving it off um, because it, it does make a big difference to this initial point. Um, then once, once the drugs are working and you're a little bit deeper asleep, we can put in two other different breathing tubes. This one is the laryngeal mask and this one is the endotracheal tube. So the laryngeal mask is aimed to sit above your vocal cords so it just slides down your larynx, sits above your vocal cords and we can hook you up to the ventilator and we can allow you to breathe by yourself. And it just means that it holds your soft tissues in your airway open and keeps us with an open airway down to your lungs where we can give you oxygen and take away the carbon dioxide. Um, with this airway, it is gentler then there's endotracheal tube, and we can put it down without using any other um, devices to put it down. So the, there is um, potentially a bit of a low risk of doing damage to the airway with this one. Then this device is um, the endotracheal tube. So this one goes through your vocal cords. The advantage of this one is that it, it secures your airway. So we can put air into this little cup and this will be down, down into your lungs and it will mean that it's um, sitting in your lungs and will not allow anything to come out of your stomach and go down into your lungs. So this airway device protects your lungs. Um, so it, it does depend on different anaesthetists and different situations when we use this one. Um, but it is, it's a very, very safe airway. To put it in though, we do use the laryngoscope. So this is a metal instrument that goes down the back, the back of um, your throat and allows us to slide this in and through the vocal cords and then lock the cuff and protect it. 
sometimes, um, because it is a metal instrument, um, that can knock against your teeth. Um, so if you've got brittle teeth or areas of weakness on your teeth which are caps or crowns, this does have the potential to cause damage. What I use to try and minimise that is a mouth guard across your top teeth. So that I just put that in everyone and then um, when I use this metal device it, it really minimises the chance of getting any damage to your teeth. Okay, so Pat, what would you do if you had a, a patient with a difficult airway? Okay, so we have a number of devices that we can use. Um, the one that I find most useful is what we call the CMAT, which is a type of video lingoscope. So what we use here is the, the, the lingoscope handle that looks very similar to the one that I showed you previously, but it gives us a much better view of the patient's airway and it enables everyone in the theatre to be able to see it too so your assistant can see it and can help you with um, providing like, um, different positions where you can visualise your vocal cords a lot easier to put, put your breathing tube down. Um, we also use it, so we use it for when like patients do have very difficult airways where it's difficult to put the breathing tube in. But we also use it um, if for some reason um, the patient has neck issues where we don't want to hyperextend their neck at all, um, we can use it and we can maintain the patient's neck in just a very neutral position, um, which is yeah, really handy in some cases. We can also use it if for some reason the patient's got very difficult dental work as well, or like abnormal dentition. Um, because everyone can see what's happening in the airway, it just means that we yeah, can minimise the damage to teeth by using it as well. Um, and yeah, it's good in, in patients who may not have a difficult airway, but we just want everything to go in a lot smoother because they may have obstructive sleeping apnea or they may be large and we just want to have everything on our side so that yeah, we get a, a good view mm. and get the breathing tube in without getting up and around. Um, so Pat, what sort of information would you like to know from patients to be able to help you do your job and to ensure their safety in relation to their airway? So yeah, I ask people what their weight is because if you are a larger size, then it does often um, mean that the airway may be a bit more difficult to manage. Um, I asked about people's teeth, because I want to know whether you've got any um, brittle teeth or any built-up areas or veneers or caps or crowns, anything in, in your teeth. Um, I, I want to know whether you have a beard, because um, if you have a beard, then that can mean that we won't be able to get as good a seal with our initial mask that we put over your face. Um, so sometimes I will ask you if you would mind shaving your beard off as well because it really means that we can get a very good seal with this mask over your face and provide you with very good oxygenation um, before we actually get to the safe room and put your room tube in because there is a gap in of usually about a minute, um, and that can make a significant difference. Um, then, yeah, also in regards to your airway, I'd like to know whether you have sleep apnea as well, um, because that also means that your airway may be a little bit more difficult. Um, and I want to ensure that you are bringing your CPAP machine with you also, um, so that you've got it afterwards on the board, um, because because we've given you drugs that will um, decrease like your ability to maintain your own airway, you do definitely need to have the CPAP, the CPAP mask in the hospital with you. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, any, if you've got any history of a difficult intubation given to you by another elite test or another doctor, um, if you've woken up with a particularly sore throat or any sort of damage to your airway after a previous anaesthetic. Um, yeah, I think that, that gives me a pretty good indication. So Pat, what's the incidence of dental damage under general anaesthetic? 
Um, it is, it's very, very, very low, actually, because we are also aware um, to take care of the patient's teeth and, like, we just, yeah, are very careful when we put any type of instrumentation into the patient's airway. But we, we do need to know if we've got any areas of um, weakness, like, like the caps or crowns or the brittle teeth. Um, yeah, because they're, they're the bits that we really need to be kept for. So, Pat, um, there are some patients that have got quite badly arthritic necks and they're pretty sore and they're pretty apprehensive about undergoing anaesthetic because they're concerned that they might get injured or hurt their neck. Can you discuss what you would do under general anaesthetic in those situations? Yeah, so in those situations, I'll, get, I'll have a, a good discussion with the patient beforehand and I'll get them to show me what, what their normal range of movement is that doesn't cause them any issues. Then when we position onto the bed, we'll have um, the right pillows in place so that they feel comfortable when they're lying down flat. Um, and then once we go off to sleep, to minimise any sort of neck movement, um, we'll use this CMAC device again um, if we're putting in the full breathing tube. Otherwise, we just will um, make sure that we keep their neck in that neutral position and we don't, um, we don't move it around in extension or lateral movement and just generally support it. If we need to turn it on your side, which we do sometimes, um, we'll make sure that your neck stays in line and that when we have it on the side that, that your neck is in a, a neutral line position for that as well. Just try and minimise the risk of anything, anything that they're happening to your neck. So Pat, for a patient that's been managed for an airway, what should they expect when they wake up? So, yeah, when they're waking up, it depends whether, whether we pop, pop down the um, laryngeal mask or whether we pop down the alleged curl tube. With the laryngeal mask, with waking up, um, the patient, a, a fair portion of the time, will still remember this one being in their airway and then sliding out. So, because it's, it's a pretty non-traumatic airway device, um, it's, it's pretty well tolerated. So. The patients will usually be opening their eyes. Sometimes they can be coughing a bit, um, and then and then you like a lot of the time you will feel the sensation of the airway coming out um, of your airway. But it's it's yeah not not a traumatic experience in any way. With with the LHP tube, we do tend to take this one out a bit earlier. Um, but we still wait until you open your eyes or you follow commands. So occasionally patients will remember this one coming out, um, but not very often either. And you may still have a sore throat for about 6 to 12 hours afterwards. It does settle down very fast. Um, 